Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is the Mirai Club update. Uh, I am in the Mirai right now. Uh, just got some breakfast burritos with some friends. Um, and before we dive into today's subject, really cool accent piece, if you didn't know, is in the back seat, there is this kind of like wave-like pattern. That was a cool touch. And there's little cutouts where your head should be so you have a little bit more headroom i'll see it i'll sit in the back um so you can see kind of the headroom i'm 6'2 it's comfortable but it's a little tighter for how big this car is but anyway subject matter of the day right here from the state of california the dmv um, this is a vehicle registration notice renewal notice um, that i got first one it's been a year oh, almost a year now with this car and I, this is something that um, myself and my fiance didn't calculate or put into our calculation when considering this car. And I hope this information helps you at, anticipate or consider this when thinking about buying this car. Um, so generally speaking, a registration renewal, it, I don't know all the details, but I know it depends on the value of the car, the, how old it is, how many are on the road, or not how many other how old it is and uh the weight but I, anyway generally speaking for the cars i've had in the past it's anywhere from 150 to maybe 300 dollars um depending so that was the ballpark i had in mind um and considering this car is a hydrogen car i didn't do any research i should have um i just assumed they would be a little bit more lenient because they want people to buy these cars so we got the notice in and I'm looking at it right now. We paid it already, but for the total due for our registration, I'll break it down after this, was $699. So $700 pretty much, right? $700 registration fee every year to keep this car legally on the road in California. Uh, breaking it down here, registration fee is $383. License fee is three hundred five dollars, and then a district county fee is eleven. So the big, essentially, is broken out by four hundred dollars and three hundred dollars. Quite, you could put it simply. Registration is about four hundred, and license fee is three hundred. Um, again, the actual numbers are three eighty three and three hundred five. But um, yeah, long story short, it's it's a lot for um, for vehicle um, registration. Let me see if I can. I'll show you the. The paperwork without our VIN, obviously, right here. Take a look. You can see that registration fee. Um, actually, let me put it against the shade. I think that would be helpful. But yeah, it's a lot of money. Um, this is the highest registration fee I've seen um, and expected. Like, it's more than I expected for a car like this. I should have done my research a little bit better, but here we go. So yeah, you can see that. Um, yeah, it's it's a lot. Um, and again, I just assumed, um, shouldn't have some assumed, I should have done a little more research, but yeah, I thought they would incentivize the, the hydrogen car more. There'd be some sort of incentive with the registration as well. Um, things I'll break down in another video. So before purchasing this car at the time, the, the price of, uh, like the pr last year, uh, the, the price of used cars and new cars were still really high, kind of leading off, um, uh, trailing from the pandemic. And uh, I looked at the incentives, which are the, for this XLE model, 15,000 off from Toyota, a $8,000 tax credit, federal tax credit, which I will be filing this year. I'll let you know how that goes. A, um, a $4,500 rebate from the state of California. And I got that as a check. So we got that. It took about uh, three months to get from start to finish. Um, we have the 21 days of rental car with Toyota, the Mirai swap, they call it, or three years, whatever comes first. You get the $15,000 fuel card um, or six years when you purchase the car, whatever comes first. Um, and with hydrogen prices the way they are, you're cutting into that lifespan. Anyway, you get free roadside assistance from, 
from Toyota for, I believe it's three years. Um, it's a six year powertrain warranty, which was huge to me, um, which covers the the hydrogen fuel cell all the way up to the electric motors and the, the battery cell, I believe. You might want to check that, but it comes with a good warranty there. Um, Toyota Care for three years, complimentary, I believe, um, which is the 5,000 mile inspection 10, 15, which is essentially all they do is plug it into a computer and just make sure everything's okay. There shouldn't be anything that's like an oil change equivalent, like you change it out every uh, every so miles, um, from what I could tell, from what I researched. But yeah, registration was not in that factor, at least not big enough of a factor in my mind, um, but that should have been a factor because $700 a year is a lot. Um, you kind of, yeah. The monthly payments right now for us, oh, 0% interest from Toyota if you qualify. 0% interest, zero down for six years. And in this kind of macro environment, I thought it was a good financial play um, to free up li some liquidity um, and save up for something more important. And 0% interest was very appealing to me um, with uh, potential, like right now, inflation, um, things like that. So cheaper money um, in my mind. So. That was the that was the thought process. I thought we were pretty thorough. Oh, also last um, another thing is insurance. We did get I before I purchase any car, we check insurance and uh, try to get a ballpark of for the coverage we want. How much generally is it going to be per month? Because you can get a crazy deal on a car, but the insurance might be through the roof, and that might just essentially just take away your savings. So um, I did get a quote. One thing I did learn is that insurance varies a lot. I used to be a licensed State Farm agent, so I generally know. I thought I, I thought I did. Um, the the variable, the variability between rates. Um, so I thought maybe like I got we got quoted a uh, hundred dollars a month for a pretty good coverage, full coverage, um, a hundred three hundred thousand, one hundred thousand, um, and then uninsured motorist was um a hundred thousand fifty thousand but pretty good um deductible is a thousand get rental car coverage um property damage i think up to 10 so not minimum for sure and it was about a hundred dollars quoted for the an address in fullerton we are currently in the roland heights area and for the same exact quote same exact company at the time was geico so we got quoted a hundred and we still do for Fullerton, but in Roland, it's a hundred. We, we got quoted a hundred eighty dollars, which is absolutely nuts for the same. Nothing has changed. No accidents, no speeding tickets, literally nothing has changed. Um, that caught us off guard. Um, we did some shopping and we ended up going with Mercury, um, which maybe on the totem pole of insurance companies, maybe a little bit less, but still same coverage. If they're legally obliged and doing their part, then that's fine with me, but um, we ended up we end up currently spending about I think it's a hundred forty a month, uh, which is about a forty dollar forty a forty ish dollar uh, savings from Geico compared to Geico. But anyway, all this to say, we thought we we did our due diligence and covered all of our bases. We weren't going to be surprised with anything um, with anything uh, until this paper came in from the state of California. Oh, I forgot. I was gonna show you guys how it is in the back seat. Let's see. I'm gonna do a full video on this later, but uh, just for just since I mentioned it already. So this is the back seat. This is my normal driving position. Um, I drive generally. Uh, some people say pretty close to the wheel, but essentially when I'm all the way back in the seat, I let my wrist hang off the steering wheel. If you're uh, into motorsports at all, that's like a general rule of thumb. I'm not a fast driver by any means but I know some very very basic things but here we go all right I am 6'2 you can see here my knees are right up against they're not pressing but they're right up against the back seat um, foot feet room kind of tucked in not much wiggle room with the toes just a little bit the seats are very comfortable I will say sorry there's a cooler back here but the seats really comfortable if I'm sitting my butt is against the back straightening out 
I can't fully straighten out. I have to slouch a little bit and I fit. I probably have to slouch maybe two or three inches. There is a, an additional kind of cutout here, which helps, but um, I'm 6'2", and uh, it doesn't fit. I don't fit super comfortably, but... Um, oh, and one more thing. The huge hump where the hydrogen tanks are, or some of them, um, it's pretty big. So if you're sitting in the middle, it's gonna be really tight. Um, but out, outside of that, it's a really comfortable space. Um, the, the, there's soft touch materials, this kind of pleather material here and here. Um, and overall, it's a really nice space. Uh, it could be, yeah, I would say if you're maybe six, five, ten below, it might be really good. Um, again, the leg room is probably the biggest culprit. Um, I'll generally flare out my legs like this, but if I was to slouch so my head doesn't hit, it would be like this. So just keep that in mind if you're buying this car. Of course, you have two USB ports, which are nice in the back. You got two air, air ducts, which are nice. You can't control the climate, but you can control the airflow. Then you got the cockpit, of course, but yeah, uh, that's how it is back here. And then, oh, forgot kind of reading lights, LED, which is nice. And they have this kind of honeycomb pattern. I don't know if you can see that, which is kind of cool, I guess. And uh, this kind of pattern on the, the ceiling. Got your grab handles, you got your tweeter. JBL tweeter, which is nice. Again, sound system is great in here, but yeah, I am 6'2", and uh, it's a little tight, so.